Hello and welcome. I am introducing to you the Primrose Garden Stamp and Die Set. Now this bundle has a small stamp set with a bunch of sentiments to it. And then we have the die set that is going to be able to create a card front panel and then also be able to decorate it. Now you can use these all together like the packaging shows here on the back or you can use these elements separately on your other card projects. So first let's take a look at the sentiments included on the stamp set. We have thank you, thinking of you, congrats, hello, sending you so much love, miss you so, best of luck, happy birthday, and then there's a little heart on there that is absolutely adorable when it's so tiny like that. All of these sentiments are going to fit perfectly on this banner that I was just pointing to. It's a banner that you can die cut out of any colored cardstock and then stamp your sentiment on. Here's a look at the panel that you'll be able to die cut. So I used the outline die to die cut out the main panel piece out of eucalyptus cardstock. And then there is the piece piercing plate that is separate. So you can add that over the top. It is going to kind of give you an outline of where everything goes, but it also makes a great background. If you want to have just some subtle interest to a background, that piercing plate is going to be perfect for it. Then we can start building up our scene. So if you want to use all of the pieces, we're going to start out with the large leaves that I die cut out of the rainforest cardstock. And you're going to be able to see the piercing lines where those large pieces go. And the leaves go all the way to the end of the cardstock. They're going to fit perfectly in that little place. And after a while, once you start layering your pieces in, if you kind of lose track of where things are supposed to go, definitely refer to the packaging. It gives you a great idea of where everything is to be placed. You can mix and match and create your own design, or you can refer to the Concord and Ninth website. A few things I added there were the berry stems and also a flower stem that was die cut from the grasshopper cardstock. The berries I die cut out of the new wild berry cardstock. So there are two different ones that are kind of die cut together and they have a little etched line in them. It does matter which section they go in, but you'll be able to tell once you line it up and look at the etched line. And then there's the single berries that you can add on the top and they're a specific place. Then we have some leaves that I also die cut out of that grasshopper cardstock. I'm kind of using the pierced lines. I still see them poking out behind the big leaves, so I know where those go. And I'm also referring to an image that Concord and Ninth provided so that I can line these up correctly for you. There's two groupings of flowers. There's a larger one and a smaller one that I did from watermelon cardstock. Then there's this flower. Now there's one die that I did three times out of creamsicle cardstock. You could see that starting to kind of build up our layers in the back and also starting to hide our stems from our leaves. We also have a centerpiece for those three flowers that I die cut from the creamsicle cardstock. I just did it in the same color cardstock, but you can have some fun mixing and matching your colors. Now we have these beautiful blooms. So for the die, there is one die for this large flower. I die cut it twice out of white cardstock. And then we have kind of this side view of a bloom. So there is going to be a backer piece and then a front piece that layers over the top. You can have some fun and die cut the back piece from a darker shade of cardstock and the front piece from a lighter shade if you want to mix it up a little bit. And then we have the stamen that I just tucked in between. Now for the flower, the larger one, I die cut twice and I just shifted it. So it's going to create this beautiful full bloom and then my yellow centerpiece and the banner that I did from wheat cardstock. So with your banner, you can really customize how you want this to look on the front of your card. All of those sentiments on the stamp set fit on this banner. And with the flags, you can put them up, put them down, put one up, one down. Maybe you want your banner coming in from the side so you could leave one off. Just really depends how you want it to look. So really customizable. Now, because of the size of this die, you can create a shape card. So I have a piece of white cardstock here that's cut to five and a half by eight and a half, and I scored it at four and a quarter. So I like to create side folding card bases, but this is something that can also be done with a top folding card base. So I reinforce my fold with my bone folder. Now there are two large dies to this. You have your outline die and you have your piercing plate die. So I want the outline die to create my shape card. 
I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to place it so you have your sharp side or your cutting edge facing down just like you would with your die cuts and I'm going to line it up over my panel. Now I have my cardstock folded in half right now and I'm going to look at that left edge and I want that to hang off of the edge off of my fold. See there's my fold. I have it tucked in so it's my side folding card base and I want that hanging off the edge so that we can have that right side be a shape. When you're doing this you can hold that down with a low tack tape but you want to make sure you have folds so you can kind of tuck it in a little bit but you just want to make sure sure that your fold is kind of in a little bit and your die is hanging off of the edge that way when you run it through your die cut machine it is going to be connected and it's going to open up we'll be able to place our panel on top so you're not going to see it like this but we'll place our panel over the top in a moment and i do have some little center areas there that are die cut out just depending how you line up your die, you may not want those kind of open areas there. So it just depends on how you line it up over your fold edge. Now, none of this is glued down. I'm trying to gently pick this up to show you how this is going to line up over the front of your card. And that is going to give you a complete panel, but it's actually a shape card. I think it's a really nice, unique surprise for the recipient. Now here is my completed shape card that I did. I actually did my base panel out of wheat cardstock, so it's got that craft look to it. Lots of new colors in here, including rainforest for the berries, which I thought was super pretty. And it's just a really fun design that you can do. You can just lay that panel over the front of an A2 size card base, or you can trim it out to make it a shape card, and it will fit inside of an A2 size envelope nicely. The next card I created was using just the elements of the set. So I didn't use that base panel with the piercing on it. I just used the flowers and some of the leaves and berries, added strips of cardstock in there and a sentiment which came from the Parcel of Petals stamp set. Now this one's a little hard to see, but I just used the backer over some pattern paper. It's got the piercing in it. I'll try and get a closer look at that for you, but it's going to be just the piercing. So it's giving a subtle look to the background out of the white cardstock. So this one has a card front created from the 2024 color collection paper pad. And the sentiment is using the all together alphabet out of that pattern paper. And then this card is just using the flower that I used with the Empire Inlay die set. So it's a really good focal point for my design. This die set I feel is a real showstopper and has a lot of possibilities to it. That's a closer look at the Primrose Garden Bundle. You can find more inspiration over on the Concord and 9th website. <music>